the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission is concerned about the viability of the Electricity Company of Ghana. Now, the details that they put out in a statement, we'll, we'll, we'll get on it shortly. But the PRC, that's the regulator of the energy space and the water space for that matter, the utilities sector in this country. They are saying that Ghana's power sector is under imminent threat due to the financial instability of the electricity company of Ghana. It was a letter that they wrote to the presidency. The PRC wants fiscal discipline and a direct barring of the ECG from engaging in non-core activities. They say the ECG is engaging in all sorts of activities. That's not really their core duty. And they want them to be checked in terms of their financial and discipline. That's essentially what the PRC is saying. And let's just look at it. After making all of these, uh, the diagnosis of the ECG's problems, they make recommendations as to what is happening in other countries where a state agency like ECG is also operating, right? They, they talk about Kenya. And Anam, we see the seventh is going to be joining us in a bit for a conversation on this matter. According to the PRC in Kenya, Kenya Power and Lighting Company is listed approximately 50% of its equity on the stock exchange, raising non-tariff funding for critical investment. So these are the comparative solutions from the sub-region, right? So they want, for instance, this to be considered a public-private partnership to deal with this. And in Tanzania, the Tanzania Electricity Supply Company Limited, that's Tanesco, the Tanzanian government converted a government on land loan of 2.4 trillion Tanzanian shillings into equity. Since 2022, Tanesco has consistently declared profits, reducing both technical and non technical losses to around 9%. Think about it 9% as of June 2024. The last time we checked, guess what? ECG is losing so much, as much as uh, almost 70%. What they say is that they lose a chunk of the electricity that they supply. They don't, they don't get the money's worth. So people, they, they do it down to power theft and technical issues that led to the, the loss of power for that matter. And so they're, they're running into losses together with all the inefficiencies that they are engaged in. Also, apart from Tanzania, they cite what's happening in Uganda. Guess what? The Uganda Umeme concession involve the private sector in metering, billing, and collection of services, resulting in a collection of a rate of 98.7%. Now, number the seven, as executive director of the Institute for Energy Security, has been talking about this for quite a while. And now, I do appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First off, with these recommendations that PRC makes of what is happening in, in other parts of the, of the sub-region, is it one to consider to turn around the fortunes of ECG. Good evening once again, Alfred, and to your viewers. Yes, I think that uh, the PRC has uh, churned out um, very vital information, uh, collecting data and uh, doing their own analysis from countries within our own uh, continent. I think that um, generally they are trying to project a private sector participation into the efforts of the ECG, something that we've been calling for for many years. And um, you know, we lost out on opportunity uh, to nail this once and for all. Uh, when you remember very well, uh, Alfred, the ECG PDS board arrangement, that is a concessionary arrangement that could have potentially address some of ECG's financial and operational challenges. The plan uh, within the, that arrangement was uh, to bring private, private sector participation uh, into the affairs of ECG to improve efficiency, reduce uh, losses, and inject fresh capital into the entity. Okay. It's very necessary that from time to time we leverage on the, the private sector because they don't only bring in expertise, but then they bring the needed funding uh, to uh, show up the operations of these critical entities. Uh, for UCG, that period arrangement was also going to introduce some expertise in metering, billing, and management. Uh, but unfortunately, um, Greek 
and um, you know some some form of shady arrangement is what led us in looking that very critical funding and arrangement. But I think we can go back and look at it. I see that you sh you recommend that the PDS arrangement should be reconsidered. Of course, all possible forms of private sector participation can be considered, but then we must do um, we must reassess the situation again because right. we have western since we introduced the PDS usage arrangement, mm. and so we should reassess it and make sure that we take the right uh, you know risk assessment of the situation and prefer solution to that. We see. don't we don't we don't we don't throw away that arrangement. It's something that we can consider, Alfred. Well, the ECG has lost the metal to be able to solve its own problems? The evidence is clear that we showed ourselves uh, and that probably we need something new to uh, uh, show up the operations of ECG. But we must not only be looking outside the country. When we speak of private sector participation, most of the time people are thinking about foreigners going to bring in uh, that, that funding and expertise. But when we look within our own uh, Ghanaian show, we've seen we've seen people Ghanaians who have managed assets very well. You can see in the very stuff they've stopped. They've been able to manage both thermal and hydro assets for many years without challenges. I think mm. we have capacity as Ghanaians, so we should look within. Even when we talk about private sector participation, we should start within. Well, Nana, and I do appreciate your time, and you can understand why people are a bit jittery when they talk about private sector participation in ECG because of the PDS experience and all the nightmare we were, we were left with. But Nana Moisi the seventh is the executive director of the Institute for Energy Security. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, after this quick break, we get into uh, an issue that has gone viral. I'm sure a number of you have seen that video of a senior high school teacher who was... Uh, pelted with stones and beaten by some students who say he did not allow them to copy in the exam hall. We'll be back shortly after this quick break on this.